Magic Cube PC Playback Faders. Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to talk a little bit about the playback faders that are down the bottom of the screen here. You've already seen how we've gone in and entered cues into this particular playback. So there are many uses for the uh, playback faders down the bottom and you can have at least 10 playback faders available at any time. There are additional pages of playbacks and if you look over here on this side of the screen, you'll see this NXT and Previous button, Next and Previous. Well, if you watch carefully, if I hit Next, you'll notice that this playback disappears. That's because we are now on Playback Page 2. If I go Previous, and there's just one little indicator down here in the, in the corner. P1 stands for Page 1. So we're talking about all the playbacks that are on Page 1. Next would be Page 2. And there are multiple pages of playbacks that you can assign here. Now, when you're running playbacks, though, when you go to another page of playbacks, you're going to get an indicator saying that you still have playbacks active on page one, if you have playbacks active on page one, so that you're going to have to deal with that, either deactivating those playbacks on page one. But the advantage is if you have different events or shows that you're running, that you can actually have different playbacks on different pages that you can jump to and therefore different cue lists. And that's another point here. Since we have 10 playbacks, most of the time if we're doing a theatrical show, we're just going to have one cue list. But say we're doing a, um, a musical show and you have several different musical groups that are coming in to perform, it might be a charity event or something at your theater, and um, you're not exactly sure what the order of performances are going to be, and you do have some light settings done for each group that's going to be performing. Well, the nice thing about the playbacks is you can put each group on a separate playback. So then you really don't have to worry about the order. Whoever's up, you just activate their playback and bring their cues in for them. So, so that's one possible use for having the multiple playbacks. Another possible use, and I'm going to show you how we do that here, is that um, I like to run devices like snow machines, fog machines, on a separate playback because when I'm running a show I may not necessarily want to activate that fog machine or activate that snow machine particularly if you know it's a thing where I have to climb up on a ladder and load confetti into the snow machine and I'm, I'm doing a run through prior to the show and checking cues I don't want to accidentally have that snow machine go off and you know get rid of all the confetti because then I'm going to have to get a ladder, get up, climb back up and reload it. One of the handy things that you can use a playback for is putting things like fog machines or confetti machines, confetti cannons, that kind of thing on a separate playback so that you can choose whether they're going to be active or not during the performance. Uh, let's do a for instance here. We'll do, we'll do that. So I'm going to patch an Antari uh, fog machine. So I'm going to go to our patch window. And we're going to say choose head. And I'm going to go to Antari up here. All right. And then we're going to do F3, which is, I bet, I think one of their fog machines. And we have it up here. Now I'm just going to patch this at, let's see, we've used DMX 220. I'm going to patch this like further on down the road, like put it at about an address of 400. So I'm going to say, and we're going to call it head number, oh, we'll call it head number 30. So I'll say patch it, head number 30, at universe 1, address 400, enter, and then it goes in there. Now we can double check real quick just to see, while this is selected, the Antari, and it says two channel there, we'll look and see what it says here. So we have output, fog output, and then we also have a fan speed control on that. So now we're going to go in and program two cues, one with having the fog machine turned on, and one with having the fog machine turned off. So let's go to our intensity window. And there's our fog machine right there. And I can lift this up. So that's going to be fog intensity. And then notice over here in our soft button, we have the fan speed. So we can click in this button, fan speed at 50%, fan speed at 100%. So fog output at 100%, fan speed at 100%. You can also use your X and Y encoders for this. So if you notice now, I'm changing fog output with my X encoder. Now I'm changing fan speed with my Y encoder. So anyway, fan speed at 100%, fog output at 100%. I'm going to record this cue over here on this playback. 
So that's been recorded there. Now that would be fog on. So let's take a look at this. That's our first cue there. I'm going to double click in here and just call this fog on and then hit return. So that's our fog on cue. Now I'll go back. We still have this head selected. I'm back to my intensity window. This head is still selected. And if we look at the programmer, it's still in there. It tells you that it's been recorded because we're at fan speed, at top speed, and output's at 100%. Go back to intensity. Now let's drop this down to zero and let's make this zero, fan speed zero, and then click record, click here, and now this one is going to be fog off. So I've recorded two cues, fog on and then fog off. Now I'm going to go back to clear, clear that out so it's not selected and we have both of our uh, cues in there. And we're ready to go. Now what I want to do is I want to tie this playback in with this playback over here using a macro and it's very, very easy to do that. I'm going to go to my playback over here. And now I'm going to go Again, hold down control, go to my cue stack so I have the larger view over here. I would like the fog to come on for scene four, stay on for scene 1B, and then the fog to go out on this blackout. So I'm going to go to scene four, double click in my macro, and say G for go, seven for playback seven, slash Q1, which is going to be fog on. So it's Go, playback 7, Q1, hit return. When I play back this Q stack, this macro is going to signal playback 7 to come on at that point and the fog machine will come on. Now remember, I want the fog machine to go off over here, so I'm going to double click here and say go 7 for playback 7 slash Q2, which is fog off, and then hit return. So it's that easy to input your macros. Let's go back to run show and we'll see what happens now. Keep in mind that you need to have, if you actually want the fog machine to run, you need to have your intensity level up. So we've got to raise the intensity level for this, even though we haven't started using this playback. Otherwise, if we leave the intensity down, we'll get fan speed, but we won't get any fog intensity. I'm going to raise my main playback over here, and we'll start this playback. Here we go, Q1. And Q2. And then remember, it automatically goes to Q3, because that's linked. Then we have our blackout, Q4. Now, when I go to this next scene, you will see this playback become active, and you'll actually see our fog machine come on. So here we go. There we go. So it linked in, and it actually started this playback, so the fog machine is currently on and running. Now, it should stay on for the next queue because we're not doing anything with that. So as far as we're concerned, this is staying on the fog on queue. Now when I go to the next blackout queue, this is going to jump to the next queue, which is going to be fog off. All right, so that works. The only thing that we'll want to do, and um, I'm going to want to make sure that the fog on and fog off, rather than having them scroll in for a three second fade and three second out fade, I want to make them at zero. So let's go back and fix that really quick. Um, now I need to remove or get out of both of these playbacks. You can do them individually by clicking on it and then saying release. But a shortcut here is just to click shift and then release. That will automatically release any playback that is currently active. Let's take a look at here. Let's fix this fade, make this zero. And let's fix this fade and make this zero. So the fog machine is going to go exactly right to that um, intensity level that we set it at. Okay, the final thing that I'd like to show you with playbacks here, and some of you might have had questions about, is it possible to program a submaster? And the answer to that is yes. So let's assume that we have some of our auditorium lights are also controlled by uh, DMX dimmers so that we can control those auditorium lights from the light desk. So let me go back and patch. We're going to just make this up. Um, so I'm going to say I have generic dimmers and they're at um, 500, 501, and 502. So I'm going to choose dimmer, generic dimmer. We're going to patch it. I'm going to make these heads, I'm going to move these down and make these heads um, 50 through 52 at 
and I want to start this at 500. So 50, 51, 52. So three different addresses at universe one address 500 and hit enter. And there we have our three generic dimmers in. It's called head 50, 51, 52. There's our addresses for that. Uh, let's highlight, drag down here, and then just click set. And we're going to backspace over dimmer and call these odd lights. So auditorium lights. So we have those in. I'm going to leave them at no color um, because we don't need any particular color for those. Um, you can put them in at a gel color if you like. So we have our auditorium lights program and they are generic dimmers in there. So auditorium lights and they're at no color. Um, okay, and I can just click here anywhere to get those out. So now uh, we're going to go back. Let's take a look at our um, intensity. There's our auditorium lights that we just added, our different heads. So what I'm going to do is just program these in a queue to be on. So I'm going to select them. And then I'm going to put them at 100%. There's my three auditorium light channels. They're at 100%. I'm going to say record. And I'm going to click over here on this playback. So now they've been recorded there. I'm going to clear out. So we have one queue recorded over here on this playback. It's just the auditorium lights on. And I can type in Q here, odd lights. Now, let's take a look at this under the Q stack window. When I get in the Q stack window, notice that I have some soft keys up here and I have some choices that I can make. What I'm going to do is go to, again, I have this playback selected and we're looking at the auditorium lights on Q for that. I'm going to go to view options. And then here, Fader activates QStack. I'm going to double click and select yes. And then Fader releases QStack. I'm going to double click and say yes. So raising the fader is going to activate that queue. Bringing the fader down is going to deactivate that queue. And it's going to do that automatically. Let's go to run show. Uh, let's just put our auditorium. You know what? We won't put all of them up, but let's put one up somewhere so that we know what's going on. How about I'll click here. That was head 50, 51, and 52, correct? So I'll say set. I'm going to click here, type in 50, enter. So it's not going to show me all of them. You could, if you had a spot, you can put all three of them in if you want to. But head 50. So this is going to show me whether my auditorium lights are actually coming on or not. Now, watch what happens when I raise this fader then. Auditorium lights come on. When I pull the fader down, auditorium lights go off. The only thing again is remember that Q uh, QLC has put in a, a default three second fade. So I'm going to double click here and change this to zero. So now the fade up and fade down is going to be totally controlled by my fader here. If you watch, I fade it up and I fade it down. So basically I've created a submaster over here. You can do that with any of the lights or if there's certain onstage lights that you'd like to have available. Just keep in mind your rules of HTP and LTP. If we're bringing up other lights, like let's say some of our lift hoidals, like a head one, two, three, four, and five, we could put that on a submaster. But if we're running that submaster and that's up and the intensity level is higher than what's coming from one of our cues, highest takes precedence, HTP. So that submaster would override the levels that were over here if the submaster was running the intensity at a higher level. So just keep in mind your rules of HTP and LTP when, when you're doing that. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that will give you some ideas how to use your playbacks in your light board. And again, for, for most in most cases for community theater, this is going to be more playbacks than you absolutely need. And if you're thinking out of the box, you can probably come up with some more ideas for what you can use them for besides what I've shown you.